Now that the infrastructure is up and running, I come into play with my team. My name is David Kerf and I'm a application slash service owner in Forth Coffee. Me personally, I'm responsible for the point of sales application as well as the fixtures security solution, which is a two-parter physical security access as well as network video recording from the security cameras in and around our locations. The point of sales app is in-house written by my team. It's Python based on Linux containers that we deploy in Kubernetes clusters and the other application we buy from a partner and actually get the solution either as a VHD or as an MSI file, a traditional Windows installer. So let's dive right into it. So when I'm in, get the notification that the new location is up and running, I basically go in the Azure R Cup. I'm gonna click on the Kubernetes cluster where I see all the clusters that are available to me. And now that we have a new location, I'm gonna add a new one. So I'm gonna say, create a new cluster. I select a resource group, give it a name. So let's call it point of sales. And we select the custom location, which we Fremont. Then we're going to go down here, generate a new key pair, point of sale key pair. And then we go to the node configuration. We can define the node size and how many nodes we need. We can also say if it's Linux or Windows based. Let's select three nodes and go to the next one access with microsoft we're fortunate enough to can integrate directly with azure active directory which is a huge relief because otherwise it can be sometimes tricky if you have a special identity provider for kubernetes so all we need to do is make sure we add the group for my team we we'll move on to networking no changes needed here for the purpose of this demo we don't need the integration into monitoring and then we basically can run validation of it and hit create now for the purpose of today similar to in a cooking show we also have a finished situation where we already deployed a kubernetes cluster so we can move on right away so here is my cluster in redmond that i already done on the left side you see all these management capabilities that i have out of the box similar i have with other azure resources here we can for example see all the services that are currently running on this particular clusters as you go through here you see all the things that are up and running and there is is no for sale app. Now to deploy the app, we can go about different ways, but the easiest way is to use the GitOps configuration, which allows us to basically point the Kubernetes cluster directly to this YAML file, which then automatically will update. We can set the interval in which it should update so that when the developers just write code, they just can apply fixes and other things and don't always need to arrange with other teams in IT to have maintenance windows, etc., to update or fix their application. I'm going to need my notes quickly here and open a new configuration name, which is for coffee app. The namespace is for sale app. And this is a cluster based deployment, the Git repository. That's why we need the notes here can be found here. This is a public one and the interval we can reduce to every minute to check if there is new things. Here we need to create the absolute path to that YAML file I briefly gave you. So let's call this for sale and the path we're gonna grab from here. This is where the YAML file is also updated to once a minute. We're gonna use the prune function and we say next and hit create. Now while this is creating, let's look at what happened in the background. So from the Azure portal, we initiated an AKS hybrid cluster deployment to our new location. The command basically throwed from Azure Arc down to the Arc resource bridge to the Kubernetes service on Azure Stack HCI, which basically told it to provision a set of Linux virtual machines with everything we need from the core components, storage, networking providers, just everything. Few things I wanted to highlight is the fact that this was very simple. Even though we deployed at a location, it was the same push button experience as you would expect from a managed Kubernetes system in the cloud. Second, our app is Linux based and it's getting first class treatment because the AKS service includes a Linux container host image that is fully maintained, secured and supported by Microsoft. And third, the native integration with Azure AD without having the need to set up something separate to get this going. You also saw thanks to this GitOps 
configuration with the Flux extension, the developers can really focus on deploying features or fix features without having to wait on infrastructure teams. They can use their standard tools, community tools that are being created like Flux and others, and they can fully take leverage of dev test in the cloud and deploy at the edge, all with the same tool base. So when we go back here to the cluster to see if our extension is already done, here we see it's actually compliant and succeeded, which means we can go back to the services and then we should see now somewhere the fourth coffee app here we go and you see here we have an external ip for this particular service so i'm gonna quickly take this and copy it jump over into the remote desktop that i already have open to our cafe location so that we're in that virtual network where this ap exists and here we go this is it the team is up and running and can start selling cafe and we can move on to the second application now i did mention that the fictitious security solution is a two-parter we have the physical access that reads the batches when you get into the cafe which is basically just running on a windows server no very special requirements and it's basically a windows installer that has to be executed on that machine the second one is different the vendor gives us a vht we upload it and then basically just deploy that vht but we have to make sure it runs with the 16 gig of memories and has the three discs with 500 gigs each available to store the recordings so when we go into the azure portal i'm here in the azure arc hub i click the azure stack hci where i see all the hci system at my disposal I click on this location 3010 and the first thing I need to do is I need to create these VM images that I use to build my VMs and basically you see here already two available one is the server 22 and the core version of it and the other one is the VHD that was provided from the customer. Just to give you a hint how easy that is, you can basically say add a VM image, you can select from the marketplace, and then here you can select which version. Once it's downloaded, you don't have to re-download it on this particular HCI cluster. And this is basically the fully patched up to date from Microsoft Windows Server version that you have here. And then you can use that image. That said, you can also use other methods to add images. One would be from a storage account within Azure, which is what we used. So the vendor gives us the image, we upload it to our blob storage and then distribute it from there to the individual HCI clusters. Or you could also update it or upload it from your local share if so desired. Once you have done this, you basically click on virtual machines and you say create a VM. You then basically are already in the right resource group and in the right location. And all you need is to give it a, a name so let's say this is for the physical access and then here you want to make sure you select the right one now this is the windows installer based so i take the standard image I need to have a admin here a local one and then enable the guest management disks we don't need additional disks but we do need a a nick a network card connected to the local virtual network and then kit review and create the same is true for the vhd that we got from the customer the difference is we uploaded this also already as a custom image so we go straight into virtual machine create vm here we say on sec nbr for network video recording and then here i select the custom managed items this one and then here we know we need the 16 gigabytes because they told us to i need to define the local admin account password. I also want to make sure we enable guest management. And then here we're going to have to write, basically add the disks of 500 gigabytes that were specified from the vendor. So we can give it any name. I'm just going here. Disk one, two, three to add zero, disk zero, three. Okay, networking the same as before. We do need a NIC card, so call this and we are NIC01. We select the existing virtual network, review and create and deploy it. Now for the time purpose of this demo, I also have this already deployed. So here we see the physical access in the U-Town location and the network video recording. You see here the difference. One has zero disks and one has three disks attached to it. The network video recording is all done at this point. It will find the camera automatically because it has that VHD the vendor has provided to us. However, 
the U-Town access, we need to execute that Windows installer. We can do different ways for that. We could RDP into it or remote execute into it, or we can also do it with an extension by clicking on extension on this machine, adding an extension, custom script for Arc, then select here in our share, the right script, select it and basically execute it. And this is it. And after this is run, also the Fixtures Network Access Solution will be installed and ready to go. Now, as you can imagine, if you have hundreds, thousands of locations, that's a lot of clicks. I ran you through it, obviously, but it's a lot of steps. So you can also automate that. For example, here we have a JSON file template that we could execute directly in command line if we want to, or we can make sure we copy this part, go back here, say, deploy a custom template, build our own template, paste the content in here. And then now we basically have everything here asked a lot of less clicks. We also can make sure it does what we want it to do by visualizing the template. And here we see we have the network video recording with the free data disks and we have the separate VM which has the physical access solution in it.